Hi again everyone, Marty back once again with my friends from Gig Performer. In today's video I'm going to show you their brand new totally pimped out audio player that's coming to Gig Performer 4.7. Now trust me when I tell you, this is no ordinary audio player. Check this out. Yeah, so first off, the clues in the title, this is now a streaming audio file player. So any files that you add to this are streaming straight from your hard drive and not getting loaded into RAM. So you could have a hundred files listed in here and it will barely impact your system resources. So cool. So I've already added some files into here. Very simple, you just click that button and it's all very simple. You just drag them straight into the player, very easy. This top window here shows you the full waveform and the lower one lets you zoom in and out. Once you have some files in, you can do some basic organization. You can shuffle the track list here and you can sort by name and you can delete tracks here if you don't need them. Over on the right hand side, you've got all your transport controls. You have play, fast forward, rewind, previous track, next track, mute, loop, auto play the next track and you can sync with host. And as you can expect from Gig Performer, all these transport controls are mappable. For instance, I've got that play button hooked up to my Nectar Pacer. Very simple to loop a section. Choose a marker point near a transient and add a loop point there with that button. And then move across. I'll just pick a random one here. Click for another loop point. And now you can see that that has set up a loop. Very cool. So up to this point, pretty basic stuff and all that you would need from a good audio file player until I show you what you can do with markers. This is pretty special. I'm not sure if I've ever seen anything quite like this. Let me know in the comments below if you have, but I certainly haven't. With any given audio file, you can set marker points anywhere on that wave file, like so. I'm gonna put one right at the start on this one here, just by clicking that button, add marker. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to add another marker point round about there. And I think I'll go for another one right there and let's do another one. So we've got four marker points. Now what can you do with markers I hear you say? Let's hit this marker list view tab and you can see that on this given wave file now we have four marker points. Check this out though. Click the actions button on any of those marker points. And this brings up a brand new device called the Timeline Actions Tool. And I personally think this is a little bit genius. So I'm on marker point one here. And what we can do is insert any type of action. Now, I'm not going to go through every possible action that you can create in this Timeline Actions Tool because I would be here for like six hours. But hopefully showing you the basics will let you see the power and flexibility of this bad boy. Oof. Now, I know this track's BPM because I created the track and it's set at 118. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the uh, global BPM in Gig Performer straight from the get-go. So that very first marker point, I'm going to choose set global BPM and type in 118. Job done. Click save. So as soon as I press play, Gig Performer's global clock will change to that BPM. Ready? Uh, super handy if you're going to sync anything, either internally or externally. Also, if you've got the BPM of the track, you can set the metronome to start. Handy for a click track or something like that. All you do is choose metronome on and off and save that in the marker point. Now with marker points, you don't have to just have one action per marker. If I go back into that marker, I can add as many actions as I want in that one marker point. Now, because I've put the streaming audio file player in the global rack space, I can get the marker points to automatically switch rack spaces. Mm -hmm. So at the intro of this song, I will choose my Juno pad and save. So when I press start, it's going to switch straight to that rack space. Unbelievably handy. Check this out. Cool, right? Now, when that main part of the song kicks in, I want that rack space to change. And it's round about where that transient kicks off just there. So marker point two, I'm going to get it to switch to yet another rack space. And I'll choose the uh, my synth lead patch here. Now it will switch to yet another rack space. Check this out.
Brilliant. Now, just for a second, I'm going to go back to marker one. I want to play around with automating that filter. Because I'm lazy and I don't want to turn a knob. First of all, a lot of you guys might know this already. I'm going to edit this widget, click the advanced tab, and I'm going to give this a name, Juno Filter. Now that that widget has a name, I can choose yet another timeline actions tool called set widget value. Now, all I have to do is type in the name of that widget, Juno Filter, and I'm going to set a value initially of, say, 25. Now, I'm going to drag the timeline playhead along a little bit and add another marker. So we're now at marker point five. I'm going to add that widget value action again. And this time I'm going to set it to 75. So now when I play back, the audio file player will automatically adjust that widget. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, even already you can see some of the power in this, right? You have some really cool things in here. If you use Chord Pro for your lyrics, etc., you can set marker points so that your lyrics will follow that audio file. You can send MIDI messages on a marker point, either internally or externally. You can choose your MIDI port here, and then the type of message. I mean, the world is your oyster here. You can send OSC messages over your network to various devices as well. You can send a program change message either internally again or externally. And this is going to be super handy if you're in a band situation where you've got guitarists with MIDI equipped pedal boards, drummers with sample pads, vocalists with vocal effects, even DMX lighting with MIDI. You could set up the whole band's sound palette instantly. Fantastic. In this little example, I've got the audio player's marker point set up to change your song parts. Now that's just a few of the basic, but I hope this gives you some insight into how powerful and flexible this new streaming audio file player can be. Please let me know down in the comments below how you think you're going to use this player. And remember this and many more new features are coming to Gig Performer 4.7 really soon, and it's free to all Desku license holders. So I'm off now for a cup of tea and a tatty scone, and I'll see you next time.